invention of the Nye pop-up bale loader occurred in the late 1940s, a few years after the end of World War II. But to understand the need and eventual success of this implement, we need to take a look at the state of the farming industry at that time. Farmers had long known that by cutting and storing the fodder for their domestic animals during the prime growing seasons, they would have nutritious feed during the lean winter months. During the growing season, grass grows at a fast pace. Hay is at its best when all leaves are fully developed and seeds are just short of full maturity. This makes the cutting and processing of hay very time sensitive and the window in which a farmer has to get his hay cut and gathered a major time management issue. Originally the process for putting up hay was extremely labor intensive, involving many long hours of heavy, difficult work. Grasses were cut by hand, carefully dried, and then moved into storage for the winter months. There are still common phrases to these processes and storage such as trying to find a needle in a haystack or tales involving haylofts and young couples. Storing hay was very important to ensure that it was not too wet or that it had been gathered and stored in such a way as to avoid rot or that heat from the decomposition didn't set the hay on fire spontaneously. Because of the knowledge needed to build a haystack, it was considered a highly skilled task. In the 1930s, mechanization was coming to farms. One of the early inventions was a hay baler. With these devices, hay was gathered and compressed into bales. While there was considerable variability in the bale size, they generally were about 15 inches by 18 inches by 40 inches. The bales were usually wrapped with two, but sometimes three or more strands of knotted twine. Importantly, the bales were light enough for one person to handle at about 45 to 60 pounds. Since the baler handled the gathering and necessary compression, much of the complexity of dealing with loose hay was simplified and it became possible to more easily move and store the hay after it had been gathered into bales. But hay baling did not solve all the issues of putting up hay. Because the hay making process was still labor intensive in the loading and transportation of the hay, and still time sensitive in having workers available when you needed them, it created the opportunity for inventions to further improve the process. In the 1940s, most farmers would bale hay in the field with a small tractor with 20 or less horsepower, and the tied bales would be dropped onto the ground as the baler moved through the field. Another team of workers would then come by and with a sharp metal hook, grab the bale and toss it up onto a flatbed wagon. Once on the wagon, the bales were then stacked and hauled back to the barn for storage. In the late 1940s, after serving as a bomber pilot in World War II, Earl Nye returned to his family farm just outside of St. Joseph, Missouri, and began operating the family farm where he had grown up. I was interested because I was doing commercial farming. I, I got interested in machinery, you know, and, and I bought a baler and I was doing custom bailing, custom combining, custom, and I bought a combine. Oh. You know, that's my, well, that's my job, but I was done. I was working. In one corner of the Nye farm, there was a metal building where Earl's brother Al and Vince operated a machine shop. The aluminum building, Vince and Al and my dad built that thing from, it was a butler building laid on the ground and they set it up and Vince and Al and that's what they did. They fixed farm machines. They made wagons out of running gears out of old uh, welding or something. Vince got real good and he never went to school. Well, he went to school out at, uh, for diesel engineering, but he never did mess with diesels. Uh, here's the idea. I had Jim help me put hay in. I had this whole bottom here full of hay. And uh, you see it was a better way. And and, yeah. and, and and them two guys helped me, you know. <laughs> so so anyhow so they made it out of start 
messed around with uh, a chain link off of a uh, binder, mm -hmm. no binder link. Well, they put sharpen that. So they had to make the, each link, like I said, and weld it on, and finally get so something or stab the pail and mm -hmm. stab it. But the secret of the pail loader on its own was the way we drove it off of the radio. And it had a lug on it, and, 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 and then there was a flipper that you could flip it over, and that would put it in gear. Or you put it the other way, you could turn it upside and pull it backwards. <clears throat> the reason we tied tape it off the wheels is when that bale hits that chain, it doesn't go in the right. When it starts out, when that bale, when you hit it and, and then the wheel's turning and it gets that started in there, then the dirt pushes the bale in. That releases that until, and you'll notice if you pick, when it when the bale will go in and it's up there just a second until that thing flip in there and, and take it on up. And if you had a solid, it would drag that thing because it wouldn't let it go up. Ah. See, this, this released it. That's where the patent was. It's how, how that uh, released it in order for it to make that turn mm -hmm. at the bottom. Of course, the springs on it is adjustable, you know, how much spring you want to have on it, too. But it made you want a good solid bale. You didn't want a loose, baggy bale. Mm -hmm. You want something that was solid. But the weight didn't mean make any difference as long as a solid bale. Mm -hmm. All the type of chain link we had when we made them, they were made and welded to each link that picks that put into the bale. They were about two inches long with a sharp edge on And uh, it had to be special link. And we made them handmade to start with until, you know, the manufacturer come out and start making them. And the top where we tipped it over. So it was released from the back of the chain. In other words, it come up there, it got away from the chain and fell over on the deck. Mm -hmm. Al put the name on it. The pop-up part or just Yeah, he called pop-up. Where'd he get pop-up from? When from you shooting pop -up. out the top or <laughs> oh, pop-up toasters. Yeah. Oh pop-up toaster. Remember them pop-up toasters? Yeah. 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 That's, that's where he got it. It's out. <laughs> but the story of the Nye pop-up baler wasn't just a simple matter of inventing a better way of picking up hay. Vince and Al were constructing bale loaders in their machine shop but didn't have the capacity to put them together on a volume basis. Then, one day, a Mr. Kramer had a car accident just across the road from the machine shop. Now, how that happened, they run off the ditch here in front of the shop down here. There was a ditch there, and they run out there, and then they got stopped right there, and and Al and Vince were working on this bale. This, where they welded it all together and everything. Well, what happened? Kramer, after the war was over, and this was in the 40s, got interested in building corn picker. They wanted to build a corn picker. Well, they didn't have no, nobody to take care of. Corn picker is pretty complicated. Mm -hmm. Need a lot of parts, and a lot of spare parts, and a lot of dealers to handle it. Well, they had a lot of material down there, and they decided it wasn't working what they were doing. So they got interested in building bail work. So they come over there, and Benson, Mr. Kramer, had a handshake deal, no nothing signed, made a dang deal, and. Uh, the thing about it is, Kramer was a pretty good guy, really. 
So Kramer began building the knife pop-up bale loader instead of his corn pickers, and it worked out well for everyone. Kramer was able to use his manufacturing operation, and the Nye brothers had bale loaders available to be sold. As Earl said, the arrangement was based entirely on a handshake, and no paperwork or documentation was ever completed. This wasn't an issue until Mr. Kramer passed away, and the new owners of the plant wanted to change how things were being done. Because of this, the Nye brothers began to look for a new manufacturer of their bale loader. Fortunately, they had been purchasing bearings and other parts from Roberts Manufacturing, who had several different facilities in Kansas. Industry out there, we made a deal. He said that we can build that thing, and we can build them out of Salina, Kansas. They had a big factory, a uh, bearing factory, and uh, that's where they made the, and we made a deal with them and uh, they start pouring them out there. And the last model of knife pop up before we sold it, so before the push on. In other words, this, this has, uh, we put in different bearings and wheels, wheel bearings for tapered rubber bearings, and instead of bronze. Uh, and we added the, for, our, for dropping in, in a container type of bed, which didn't need anybody up there. You could just uh, uh, hook it on the front end, front end of your loader, and then pull it. And then when we, when we took it down there, we folded that top back, we fold this part back down, and it shows you on the back here how we told it on the, on the, on the, uh, behind the truck. We just flipped that around and had a chain, had a pin, and we pinned it down so it would stay down. The marketing materials for the Nye pop-up bale loader described a machine that had a simple mechanical operation that did the work of six men and was estimated to pay for itself in the first 5,000 bales. Being able to disengage the wheels from driving the chain to simply roll along allowed for the easy transportation of the bale loader from field to field or back home after work was done. Comments and letters received by the Nibes confirmed the value of this equipment to the farmers. I saw a neighbor putting up hay with this loader last year. That was enough for me, so I had to have one. That bale loader is the easiest thing I ever saw. I'm going to show it to the folks at the fair. We had two balers and two loaders in the same field last summer. One loader was this type and the other was a different manufacturer. The race of the two resulted in the injury of two men and a refusal to work beside the other loader while at such speed. The only trouble with this loader is I should have bought it last year when I first looked at it. While most of the Nye pop-up bale loaders were sold through farm implement dealers, much of the marketing was accomplished through local state fairs, farm equipment shows, and farm equipment associations. Earl describes one of their more important associations. FEMA, at that time, you got FEMA nowadays. Mm -hmm. well, FEMA <laughs> then was Farm Equipment Manufacturers Association. We joined that. We'd meet once a year with the Farm Wholesaler Association. They were farm people that handled farm machinery that are were mostly like sprayers and side stuff, you know. And we'd meet once a year at a convention and and show our product and tell the setup how we're going to sell them. This guy down there by the name of 
Firstly, Henry. From Henry from, and uh, now Paul Turner was one of our salesmen. Matter of fact, they'd ask him a question about the bail order. He said, how tall is it? He'd say, well, it's pretty tall. <laughs> he was quite a salesman. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, he worked for Vince and uh, uh, Oklahoma City State Fair. His <laughs> Oklahoma State Fair uh, showed him it shows that a little bit of that wagon that she got, uh, that you brought in from there. Uh, and uh, so, did you go to a lot of fairs and stuff and demo the oh thing? Oh, yeah. That's all. I tell you what, we took that thing everywhere. I went to Kentucky with it. We're down in Kentucky. We up in New York State, upstate in New York. Uh, we went up to New York. Uh, they had a chores, you know. So well, they missed it. Turn the corner to bail to be on the ground. So when they got through, the guys would set them up on the end or something. And they leave them there. And so uh, they wanted us to clean them up. So I told my salesman, I said, you get in there. He said, now, you just drive, and if you hit one of them, just keep it on driving. And uh, we just took, picked them all up. If they'd missed, and so on, you know, the floor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Didn't have any problems picking them up? Oh, no, we did but I told him, just shut your eyes and hit them all. <laughs> <laughs> So we, we picked them, pick them up, and of course people got enthused about watching that, cleaning up the, okay. After the throw know, went left yeah. on the ground, but it shows our picture real good of Vince and, and uh, our salesman. But this was the wagon that they stole down there. It's in between them there. You can't see much of it. Oh, the little wagon? Yeah, with the, with the little bale over on it. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, it was a hand built. Vince had built it. Yeah, Vince had built it. Yeah, he made that one too. He made fifteen of them. Okay. Here's a setup thing. Shows you how to, how it was, how you put it together. We ship. You break them down to ship them so you can get more in the truck. You can. So so that was sent with. Uh, all the information on sending back up. In the early 70s, a change began to develop in the way hay was being put up. The first large round hay billers had begun to appear at farm equipment shows that would eventually replace the use of the smaller square bale. Because of this, the knives decided to sell their interest to bush hog manufacturing. They had, they made small, uh, I think long or something. That's where they were building. And uh, here's the thing, Vince, Vince and I knew we had to get into some other product because of the fact that the big round bales, the big brown bales were coming in. We had to change. We'd have to come up with another product of some kind. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was I don't think Vince was ready, and I don't think I was either. Did the it, last one you sold? And that's one I, yeah, I had had one here, and and he insisted, and uh, he said he'd pay me a hundred bucks if I delivered, so I, that was extra. <laughs> so, so I told Roy and Mari and Doris about it, so they wanted to take a trip, so we... <laughs> Loaded up? <laughs> yeah, thank God for the, Lord, oh, what a time we had. Oh, we always had a good time. Uh, Bush Hog continued the manufacture of bale loaders into the 1980s, but by that time there was little demand for a small bale pickup loader. Today, you can still find nigh pop-up bale loaders for sale as antique farm equipment and in operation when a particular farming application calls for the use of the smaller, originally sized hay bale. 
Over the years, others had tried to build similar devices or duplicate the Nibe's original idea. But with patents on several key features, most were not as successful as the original Nibe pop-up bail loader. Earl Nibe recalls the times and friends he found along the way with fondness. But when asked to describe his message to others, he recalls his early lessons as a bomber pilot and first learning to fly. He flown. Okay. He said, you and Jesus Christ are flying that airplane. He told me this when I was solo. He said, you, you're, you know, you're going to have to land it. <laughs> <laughs> then he said, I want to tell you something else. He says, all the runway behind you and all the air above you ain't worth a damn, he said. <laughs> this was your head up and what you're on top of. <laughs> well, ain't that life? <laughs> huh? Mm -hmm. All the stuff behind you is over. It's what's in the head of you. The runway's left in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> and the air above you that you're going to have to ride on. <laughs>